and welcome 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 to season three of the Oz Crow soccer show my name name is Taunchi Prusat and joining me as he did last year Ante Grabovac mate we're back we're back yes good to see you again Taunchi likewise mate likewise um I don't know what it's been like up north of the border up in the uh, harbour city but uh geez I tell you what down south here in Victoria winter has come early today I tell you what it's just not right it's been wet and wild up here as well, and um, yeah, getting cooler. As soon as Easter finished, the coolness started coming in, and, and the wet weather as well. Yeah, absolutely true. That is the case. Yeah, daylight savings ends, Easter finishes, and it's all gone nuts. Well, speaking of going nuts, this year's going to be absolutely huge. It's our third season. We're episode 56 today, by the way. Um, and a big, big thank you to uh, um, our major sponsor. Uh, we made the announcement last week, aren't it? But um, to Gem Life and to Living Gems, they are our major sponsors for this year. And as you can see, we've got a slightly different look this year. We've gone with the uh, with the kind of virtual screen, almost like a press conference type of setup. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah, this always feels like a press conference, let me tell you. <laughs> but, yes, uh, thank you so much to Gem Life and Living Gems for uh, wonderful support. And, yeah, you, you did the call out and um, <laughs> we, got, we got the call back. So uh, thank you so much to the crew uh, at Gem Life. Yeah, and, and also we, we, we also need to uh, uh, thank very much so um, the, our ad, business advertising sponsors. And there are a few of those as well. They, they've, they've also um, contributed quite a fair bit. Uh, Plame App, Nick Kraljevic, Corsa Hair, Ned, uh, Ned Tartle, back again for this uh, this year as well. Eco Duck from my hometown, Geelong, Stipe Kump, Tom Palshup, who's also the president of the North Geelong Warriors, North Geelong Croatia. Big shout out to Tom and his brother, Marinko Palshup. Um, and also Ozcro Imports as well, Juro Fricek. Um, he's also come on board as well. So we thank every one of those. Uh, look, if you'd like to be a business advertising sponsor, um, on the Ozcrow Soccer Show, look, send us an email. There it is at the bottom, Show at gmail.com, Show at gmail.com. Okay, enough of the um, admin stuff, aren't it? What's happening tonight? Yeah, well, tonight is quite exciting, actually. Uh, we're going to uh, cover the news desk, and following that, we're going live to the Gold Coast Knights, where they've got a huge Australia Cup fixture tonight against the Jimboomba United team and um, Austin Ludwig will be on call there. Yeah. Then we're going, this is, I've never thought I'd say this in my life, but we're going live to Leivnor where we've got Damien Brasic <laughs> waiting for us and he's going to fill us in about the weekend's under-14 uh, Vukovar tournament. Of course, we had the Croatian contingent from Australia there and how they went and everything. Uh, Damien will fill us in on all of those news. And then we're going live to Wollongong at Ian McLennan, Sir Ian McLennan Park, the home of South Coast United, where Sydney United are playing their Australia Cup fixture tonight against Bulli and Julian Lopat will be uh, on hand there to fill us in with uh, all the updates. Yeah, look, there's some um, very interesting and exotic live crosses that we will be making tonight. Wollongong, you know, all due respect, not as exotic as Leavenor, but live from Leavenor, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, should be no, should, all jokes are shot, so it should be absolutely fantastic. On the weekend, the Croatian Australian under 14 boys select. It was the second time, second time that a touring party has has um, has travelled to Vukovar, the city of heroes, and there was a hi historical first um, that was achieved, and we'll find out more about that from Damien Bresic a bit later on. But, um, yeah, really looking forward to catching up with uh, Austin Ludwig. He is the captain of the Gold Coast Knights. And apart from giving us a live update at halftime of that game, 
um, between the Gold Coast Knights and Jim Boomba United. I think I've pronounced that correctly. Jim Boomba. Um, <laughs> Um, he'll, he'll also tell us a little bit about um, how the team is doing, and they're doing very, very well perched atop the NPL Queensland ladder as we speak. So uh, lots to talk about. Until let's have a break, um, the commercial break. When we return, it will be time for the news desk. Who's to say who's young, who's old? Compared to who? Age is complicated. You see... Most people really stop getting older at age 26, but their bodies just don't get the memo. So, hidden inside most over 50-ish year olds is the soul and spirit of a 26-year-old with the same loves and desires and hopes and dreams, just in slightly different packaging. Why waste time wondering when you could be enjoying? It's your life, and life is what you make it. So, what are you waiting for? Auntie, news desk time. Over to you, mate. I've missed that intro, let me tell you. It's been <laughs> six long months between drinks, let me tell you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the news desk. We'll be uh, going through the results and uh, what's going on around Australia. And, yeah, first of all, we have the winners list, which was very popular last year, so we thought we'd bring it back to make it simple and easier. Rather than going through each state, this is where you want to be. So every team uh, wants to aspire to be on this list every single week. Yeah. Um, well done to Western Knights who got promoted to the first division WAMPL and they're leading it. They're coming first and undefeated. That is an incredible result. Also first around the country are the Gold Coast Knights and um, that is unbelievable as are Glenorchy Knights who are also undefeated and coming first in Tassie. So uh, that's brilliant. Other winners this weekend were Gwellop, their first win of the season. The LA Croatia Raiders, with their, uh, they're coming fifth at the moment, and they, they of course, got promoted as well this year. So it's very uh, good that they're sitting there in the sort of semi-final position so far, very early on in the season. The Knights got their third win, win of the season, and they're in eighth place currently. And Canberra Croatia had their first round win. O'Connor did not play. And Zagreb got their second win of the season, a big 4-0 result. So well done to the Hersel Zagreb boys as well. Yeah, just a little bit of news coming from Victoria as well. Uh, St. Albans Dynamo, after a 6-0 shellacking at the hands of Heidelberg United, have parted ways with their coach, Ryan McGuffey. So the club now is um, keep, earnestly looking for a new coach. Um, maybe Mislav Karoglan, he could probably uh, uh, apply for there, the uh, Heidel coach. We'll talk a little bit more about that very, very shortly. But um, as of this year, Ante, um, I've got the pleasure of actually producing and hosting Dynamo TV, which is simulcast on Ozcro Soccer Show each week. So that's on Thursday nights from 8 p.m. Do tune in every week. But, uh, mate, what, 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 is, what awaits us uh, speaking of the week ahead? The week ahead, well, we're focusing on the home fixtures. Uh, WA, MPL, Western Knights are at home to Armadale, so we'll get on down there on Saturday afternoon. Canberra, Croatia are also home, but that's on Sunday at Deakin Stadium. Friday night fixtures, Melbourne Knights are at home to Heidelberg. That'll be a huge fixture, of course, the traditional NSL rivals, and, um, yeah, always a good fixture between those two. And Brisbane, they're at home against the Centenary Stormers. What a name they are. And they're, they're, they're at home on Friday night as well. So uh, get on down to any of those home fixtures um, for those four teams. There's only four teams around the country that are playing at home this weekend. Yeah, now we were hoping to cross over to Brisbane, uh, Brisbane, Croatia tonight. But um, apparently, game's been postponed. Tell us more, aren't it? Yeah, unfortunately, due to weather, this was an Australia Cup fixture, so um, that match has been postponed tonight due to weather, and I'm sure that that will be, um, you know, rescheduled, and hopefully we'll be able to do a cross um, in future over to Brizzy. Yeah, that's right. Um, um, moving along now to uh, this week away. Yeah, a lot of lot of teams are away, as you can see from the list. So if you follow any of those particular teams, um, make sure you go and support them home and away. The big one there, another NSL rivalry with Apia uh, playing 
Sydney United and hosting Sydney United on Sunday afternoon. Of course, both of those teams are sort of being added to the B-League. Uh, we haven't heard much about the B-League since it, were la- it was launched. We can maybe talk about that a bit later on. But, um, yeah, that, that's a huge game in Sydney on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, some big games happening there, that's for sure, coming up this weekend. Um, Sydney United, I think, are perched now seventh position or something like that. So they do need a win. Um, they had a really good run of matches, but then on the weekend they lost to their bigger uh, rival, Rockdale Illenden. Another important game is the North Geelong one in VPL1. Eight games, eight losses at the moment for the Warriors. They come up against a team that um, the, they got relegated um, alongside with or along with from the um, NPL competition. This year it's been changed. The NPL2 is now known as VPL1. And um, uh, interestingly, it, this corresponding fixture last year, Bentley Greens away, it was round one of the NPL competition. North Geelong Warriors actually defeated Bentley Green. So they'll certainly be looking to, um, to, uh, to uh, I guess, emulate what they did last time around. But uh, um, the other one I wanted to make mention of, um, the Gold Coast Knights, um, they're up against Sunshine Coast. So they're second last, sun- the Sunshine Coast. But the Gold Coast Knights at the moment are top of the table. They are uh, 15 points from... Six games, five wins and only one loss, but um, they've got the Queensland Lions breathing down their neck. They've got four wins and one loss from five games, so they've got a game in hand. But the Knights are doing very, very well, aren't they? Absolutely, they are. They're doing very, very well. And, yes, thank you, uh, Tony. We will uh, fix that. It's actually MPL 2 because of the way... Yeah, some some of the states have got MPL, then they've got MPL 1 and MPL 2, then others got MPL 1 and MPL 2, MPL 3. Like, let, let's make it, you know, a level playing field around the, the country, yeah. I would tell you. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, TC. We'll, we'll uh, sort that one out. MPL we'll 2. Yeah. All right, move on along to the Australia Cup, mate. What? We've got 10 clubs. 10 clubs still in the Australian Cup, which is fantastic. And how exciting is that? And, yeah, um, yeah there's two of those, as we mentioned um, on tonight. Torchy, if you go to the fixtures, you will see that um, we've got Sydney United away. We've got Gold Coast at home. Brisbane, as we mentioned, um, has been postponed because of the weather tomorrow night you can go down to riverside stadium 6 30 p.m in canberra to watch the tigers take on canberra croatia the o'connor knights are on next wednesday um, against canberra olympic that'll be another huge match and then also st albans dinamo is still in there the east bentley strikers now they're a bit of a lower division team aren't they taunchy state five apparently but you know you never never know um there's a thing that that they the, the Australian media loves, they call it the cup sets. And they obviously want to, uh, um, you know, um, uh, a lot of these giant killing acts often get performed. Let's hope for Dinamo's sake, even though the, the senior team in, is in a little bit of the doldrums at the moment, um, that they are able to sort of bounce off the off the canvas and, uh, and um, defeat the East Bentley Strikers. Now, that's on Wednesday, the 24th of April, remembering the next day. I think this country still celebrates Anzac Day. I'm not too sure about that, but I do. <laughs> the next day will be Anzac Day, so it'll be a great opportunity to get out and watch some midweek football, but also knowing that the next day you've got a, um, a day off, a public holiday. Ante, over to the West. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, you can see that the, the, both Western Knights and Gwellop are still in there. So they've got Saturday afternoon fixtures, which is great. The, 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 you know, you don't have to play midweek. And then we're also waiting on Glenorchy and Newcastle's fixtures to be announced as well. So uh, really exciting to have 10 teams still in there. So uh, let's hope that someone can go deep. Of course, City United made the final in 2022. Melbourne Knights made the semi final in 2023. Who can go the deepest of the Croatian clubs in 2024? Yeah, it'd be, it would be great to see, and wouldn't it be great to have as many Croatian, Australian Croatian clubs as possible? That would be super. Uh, now, speaking of the Australian Croatian scene, I guess we have got um, a former guest, by the way, a one time guest of our, sh- our show, who's actually made it as a Croatian national team representative. Tell us more about this. Yeah, uh, she came on twice last year and um, Bianca Galic has been named in the Croatian women's representative team, which is fantastic. And so uh, really, really excited for her. Uh, You know, we're going to work out whether we had anything to do with that, but, um, you know, we'll find that out. But, yeah, that's really exciting for Bianca. She's had a stellar season with the Mariners um, and they're in the semifinals. She's playing this weekend against the Victory. 
as well. So, and yeah, the, the Croatian team uh, in basically playing in a couple of hours' time, aren't they, uh, Taunchy? They lost their first qualifier against um, Wales the other night, 4-0, and 4-0, tonight yep. they play Ukraine. Now, uh, Bianca did not play, wasn't in, didn't feature in that first game against Wales, a 4-0 Welsh, lacking, I guess. But uh, tonight, midnight, uh, Croatia taking on Ukraine in Zaprešić, the old uh, Inked Zaprešić Stadium. Um, so hopefully, hopefully Bianca will be part of that squad and maybe she may um, um, be responsible for at least uh, Croatia defeating Ukraine. Uh, so th- that's coming up midnight later tonight. So um, that's great to see. Really, really is good to see. We've got that um, um, uh, in the women's team. Um, we've got a Croatian representative. Our first, our first Australian Croatian representative. Right. And well of course, done. Daniela Garlic, who was also no relation, who was on the show last year as well. She's doing great guns and got uh, called up for the extended uh, Matilda squad as well. And she's just got a very, very bright future ahead of her as well. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, turn, turning our attention to what to uh, now what is happening over in Croatia, and uh, first of all, just have to uh, acknowledge some of the people in the chat that we that, that we have jumped on. Tony Chavaris there, uh, Petar Fink, uh, Steve Skorniak says, make sure you don't forget the HNL results and table taunchy process. Big shout out to Steve, who's just recently returned from a short trip to Spain along with his. Uh, Family, well done um, to the Skorniaks. They were over there for footballing matters, so uh, nice to see that. Um, yes, why does he say, why do we need to have the HNL ladder? Of course we're going to have the HNL ladder. And to all of you Dinamovci out there, uh, you'd be very, very happy, obviously, but to Rijeka particularly, the, yep, the, the Hayduk is just going from bad to worse. Things are not going good after losing to... Dinamo both in the league and in the cup on the weekend. A very, very, the walking wounded, the injured Hayduk traveled to Rijeka where they lost 1-0 to, to Rijeka. Rijeka have now opened up a nice five-point gap over second-place Dinamo Zagreb, who does have a game in hand. So they're going to play their game uh, next Wednesday week, I believe. I think that's that's how it's going to happen. So um, some some interesting stuff happening there. Um, the results from the weekend just gone by. Rudesh, two goals to three against Osijek. Now, there was an Australian-Croatian connection, Tomislav Mrčela, scoring uh, Rudesh's second goal. Fran Karacic, I think, was involved in the first one as well. So a double Australian-Croatian connection there. Lokomotiva and Gorica drew one all. Slaven Belupo lost to Varaždin in Koprivnica, 1-0. And then the big one in Maksimir, at the Maximir, Dinamo Zagreb defeating Istra four goals to one. But the game at um, Rujevica, um, Rijeka, one goal to nil, winner, uh, winners over Hajduk. There's um, the Riechani celebrating afterwards. Now, um, what's what's happened in the meantime? We've had, um, we've had um, here we go. Um, the president, Luksha Jakobusic from Hajduk. Then there's Anthony Kalik, another strong Croatian hugging the president, or now the former president. He was given the boot by what they call the Nadzorni Odbor, so the supervisory board which oversees um, the club. So he's been basically handed a vote of no confidence. And um, so he's left. Hours after he left, he was given the boot. Um, Mislav Karoglan, the Hajduk split coach as well, was uh, shown the door. And Marina Akrap is um, she's apparently she's a, the marketing with she's the she's the woman who is behind Hayduk's um, off field um, boom if you like as far as um, commercial everything commercial um, but she's just the the acting president at the moment until they find someone else but Auntie we're both look we're both Hayduk fans but it's a disaster what's happening with Hayduk. Yes, the Dinamo Zagreb fans, and, and rightfully so, they're celebrating, they're enjoying basking in the in the glory, and, and rightly so. But mate, what's your take on everything that's happening with um, with Hajduk and the Croatian league? Oh, it's been a big um, sort of disaster, pretty much since the break, the season break. You yeah. know, uh, before the break, they were sitting pretty and uh, talking about, you know, maybe they were talking things up a bit too much, getting a bit too confident etc and uh yes since they've resumed 
unfortunately, um, things have not gone right. The bright spark, which I really liked, was that um, our, f- well, our friend, but of course our winger um, has returned. And um, he- it was good to see him back on the pitch. And of course, he, he came back in that Perisic. final. Perisic came came on. And so um, that's obviously good news for the national team leading up into the Euros. But yeah, it's been a disaster. And obviously, it's been a little bit of a, well, not a little bit, but a major sort of PR disaster with um, everything that happened at the stadium um, after that match against Dinamo as well. Yeah, we're not going to go too much into that. Unfortunately, it's a negative. And, and look, it's just sometimes it just baffles you. It really does. It baffles you what 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 is going on. But there's a lot of frustration. And look, you know, um, football, aren't it, I guess the world over, it, it just reflects what's happening in society at the time. And at the moment, down down in Split, down in Dalmatia, there's a lot of frustration, both with the economy, with the governments, with uh, what's happening in Croatian football. And look, you know, with um, D- Dinamo Zagreb getting a new president, Velimir Zaitz, there's hope. The, the Dinamo Zagreb fans are now hoping that the club once and for all will be run properly. Um, but there's the difference, you know, like... I guess Zagreb, Dinamo Zagreb has been run almost in an authoritarian way, and we know who by. We certainly know who by. We're not going to make any insinuations, but everyone knows that it's a being um, conducted from abroad um, business. But uh, uh, whereas Hayduk, the, the the common belief, and, and it's great, it's it's not great. It's interesting to follow the comments um, on social media in the Croatian press. Um, and, and, and and so forth, about what is happening, the deteriorating situation at Hajduk Split. And look, Ulitsa Vodi Klub is the, is the common saying, the street runs the club. And what they're saying is, um, you know, it, it's not the club that runs it. It's They're basically um, uh, almost like a, a, a hostage to the supporters, to the, to the extremist supporters. They're almost a hostage to those people that have got vested interests. And look, when 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 your, your team at half time don't go into the dressing room to listen to the coach, they go to the fans to ask, I don't know what, there's something seriously wrong. And everyone's saying it. And the other thing is Dinamo Zagreb have had 20 years of building up a, 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 a winning mentality, a European winning mentality. Hayduk Split have done wonders off the field in a marketing sense, in a commercial sense. But just news today, they, they're going to have to pay something like 32,000 euros in fines. The next two home games are going to be played behind closed doors. So all of that money that they've made from 105,000 members, which is incredible. But you do the math. It's 20 euros per membership in, in effect. So that's about 200,000 plus in, in, in membership, um, generally speaking. You know, you've, you've lost 30000 now in fines, plus you foregone another two home games that will have probably attracted, you know, an aggregate of 50,000 supporters. Mate, something seriously wrong. Seriously. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And and Petar Finka um, saying that, hey, look, after their fourth or fifth coach this season, I did a count uh, just before the show, and they've had 19 coaches since 2015. So that's basically two per season. And so, um, you yeah, know, that's part of the... I mean, I know everyone wants success. So I know everyone wants, you know, demands their team to be winning. But, you know, sometimes you have to be patient. And sometimes there is a rebuilding phase. I know they were looking good at one point, And obviously the fans' frustrations build over um, with the result against the animal because, uh, you know, there goes two trophies, basically, because yeah, they're absolutely. not going to win the Premiership and they're not going to win the Cup either this year. Yeah, so. but Ante, Sergei Yakirovic, the Dinamo coach, who, by the way, is 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 a Dalmatina from Metkovic. Hmm. Um, I had to throw that one in as well. Um, but, let you know, there was a time when 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 everyone was calling for his head. You know, they, they, got, they got booted out of Europe. You know, they got eliminated out of, out of Europe. They were looking to finish third, possibly even fourth in the Croatian League at one stage. But the club stuck by him. Zayets came along, the new president, he stuck by him. Um, they've shown that that stability. And look at them now. They're, they're, they're on the verge of, of making this late run for the uh, title. Um, Bosko Šutalo, we forgot to mention, he came on, another player that's injured. He's been a key player in the past. A, a, you know, a potential Croatian national team representative. He's come back from injury. Um, 
Robert, they did so well in Europe as well. Um, they, they had a good run, unfortunately. They, did. they lost um, away heavily uh, yeah. in Greece, but um, at home they, yeah, it looked after that first leg, it looked like they were, you know, really going to go through. But unfortunately, it was absolutely. Fun. But it's that stability they've got that Hayduk doesn't have, that the other Croatian clubs have. And Rijeka may well. I heard something the other day. I read something the other day. Damir Mišković, the president of Rijeka, is um, celebrating, and, and once again, rightly so. Rijeka now has 15,000 members. Now, mm. don't, don't compare that to Hayduk. Don't compare that to Dinamo. But compare that to the fact that when he first took over, probably almost close to a decade ago, not, not, not that long ago, it wasn't 10 years ago, but when he first came to Rijeka and took over, they had 385 members. So my point is the HNL is as popular now as it has ever been. We've got a brand new stadium in Osijek. Um, good crowds in places like um, uh, 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 Varajdin, even uh, uh, Istra now taking on Rijeka this weekend, and they're talking that it's, it's going to be a, um, a, a not a sellout, but it's going to be a big, big crowd, one of the biggest for those uh, Kvarnerski derby. So my point is there's so much positive there, and you just need to slowly build it. You need that patience, and that's what Heyduk needs, I think, at the moment because they've got, you know, and they've bought quality, right? They've got patience there. Far out, you know. They've got quality, but air callers as well is, is another exactly. one. But the problem is there's a lot of average players as well, you know, and that, that's and, and, and that is, that's that, that's the case. So, um, yeah, well, we, we could go on and on and on. We'd love to hear your comments. Please leave your think. comments, but we'd love your comments in the comments section. What are your thoughts on, on the situation with Hayduk? What's the situation with Dinamo and Velimir Zayats for all your Dinamo? Can Dinamo take it to the next level next year, either in Europe or in the HNL? We'd love to hear your comments. But, uh, Auntie, we're going to take a break, and when we return, it's time to cross over to Livno, huh? Live in Livno. Let's go live to Livno. I love it. All right. Ready to on. score big on the global stage? Join Citizen HR for sporting opportunities. Tired of feeling like a stranger in your locker room? Long for a sense of belonging in the global sports community? It's time to consider becoming a Croatian citizen with Citizen HR, your gateway to a second passport for sporting excellence. At Citizen HR, we understand the emotional weight of your athletic journey. It's not just about victories, it's about belonging, security, and a connection to your sporting heritage. Our mission is to make the process of obtaining a second passport for sporting purposes as smooth and stress-free as possible. Access experts who specialize in citizenship via special interest, guiding you through every step. From paperwork to strategy, we're here to ensure you have everything you need. As one user, Kate KC attested easy to use and great selection of experts available. Don't miss out on this game-changing opportunity. Download Citizen HR today and redefine your sports citizenship. So what are you waiting for? Head over to https colon slash slash citizenhr.app today. Use the code AUSCRO for 50% off any biography translations you order. Welcome back to the Oscro Soccer Show. It's our third season, episode 56. And, um, mate, it's time to now cross over to Livno Ante, live in Livno. And we've got uh, Damien Bresic on the line. Damien, good evening. How are you? Or good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, gentlemen, from us. Yes, good, thank you. Welcome to Livno. <laughs> Welcome to the Oscro Soccer Show, Damien. Pleasure to have you. How is uh, how is life over in your uh, birth country or uh, birth birth town, birth city? Is it? Uh, actually, my birth house. But I was actually born where I'm sitting right now. So um, I used to joke about being born in a private hospital. So um, just my mum and my barker. But no, it's great. Look, it's good to be back. Always nice to to visit family and friends and and. Um, I just took the opportunity. I had the opportunity to go to Vukovarski Branitelli tournament, which you've just already mentioned. So took the three, four hour drive down to Lima to see some family before I head home. So no, it's great. How special is that? Tell us a bit about the tournament, Damien. I mean, when did you get the boys together? Did you have any training sessions? What happened over once you got to Vukovar? 
Oh, look, long story short, obviously it's the, it's the 20th anniversary for the tournament and I must admit um, I was a little bit naive about the whole thing until we actually sent the team last year, as you, as you mentioned earlier. Um, it's on the back of the Hrvatsky Nogomet Nisabas holding their clinics in Australia um, and their big push to, to find the next Joe Shimunic, you know, an Australian Croatian that, that can play for the Croatian national side. So, so they, they held, um, for those that don't Damien, know, they held this, their clinic. Damien, so, sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. I, I, I don't know if you're feeling homesick or not, but we're going to make you uh, a little, feel a little bit home as well, away from home, because we've got the captain of the Gold Coast Knights, Austin Ludwig, about to join us. Okay. With the program. So just hang about. We've got Austin. There he is. Austin, good evening. How are you? Hey, guys. Good. How are you going? Yeah, absolute pleasure, mate. Um, you can say hi to Damien Bresic, uh, you know, someone you know very well. He's over in Leave now. How are you? Lovely. Damien, how you going, mate? Good to see you. Good, mate. Good. Yeah. How you going tell, against tell us Jim Austin, Boomba, the, Tony? Aren't you? It's Jim Boomba. <laughs> Jim Boomba, Jim Boomba, is that what it's called? Speaking of Jim Boomba, Jim yeah, Boomba, mate. Austin, what's the latest score there uh, in, in on the Gold Coast? That's right. Uh, second half's just kicked off. It's 2-0 to us. Um, I can show you a little bit. That's the boys out there. I'm not sure how well you can see. I've just gone oh, off behind the field well. now. <laughs> so, yeah, they've just kicked off second half, 2-0 to us at the minute. P pitch is looking perfect there, Austin. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, look, I think it doubles as a dog park down here at the moment. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's enough to get through tonight. So. Who, who scored? Who scored for the Knights? Uh, one, and I think young boy Jordan Bukavka, I think is the last name. Sorry, I probably butchered the pronunciation. Uh, but he's, I think, a crow boy. So good to see him get out there and to score as well. Well, so Scotty was happy, happy at half time and um, addressed the boys. Uh, how much is he expecting in the second half? Look, I think these games, obviously, win is the, the start and the important, but there's a lot of young boys out there who will be eager to go out there and to score some more goals. So who knows? The sky's the limit in this sort of game. I think, yeah, we want to see some more, more goals going in, and I feel like the Jim Boomba boys will start to tie us. So could be three, four, five more, I'd say. Yeah, and is it a, a very, very much a younger side? Is it kind of like a, a, a I don't want to say a second string side, but is it a lot of players that don't normally get an opportunity that are getting an opportunity? And if so, who are some of those players? Just mention them. Yeah, so it's probably a combination of young boys and second string guys. Um, the boys on our bench, obviously, getting some minutes, some fitness, uh, and then young boys on there as well. Three or four of them. As I just said, Jordan is a young striker who's come up to play with us. Joel Russell, who started the season strong for us, he's young, but very much a first-team player. Um, and then, again, I think our squad's been rotated a bit throughout the Cups with the Kappa Cup as well. So all familiar faces out there. Um, just more minutes for the guys who've been on the bench the last week or two. Excellent, mate. Well, um, well, all the best for the second half. We might even try and tune in, uh, catch in uh, a little bit later on in the show and get a progress score and update score as well. But uh, thanks, Austin, and um, and um, hopefully chat to you a little bit later on. Be no awesome. worries, mate. Just flick me a text and, yeah, we might be able to jump on then. Sounds thanks, good. Austin. Excellent. Oh, well, back with uh, back with back in Livno now. Back live in Livno, Damien. Sorry, to interrupt there, but uh, that's a good, good, good result at the moment. Two 0 up with a with a kind of a second string squad and some young players as well. Um, that must make you quite happy. You've got a big smile on your face, Damien. Uh, just just like how you look after the sponsor, mate. Don't worry about Livno. Let's look after Gem Life and Living Gems, so and the Gold Coast Knights. So well done. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Let's go back to Vukovar, Damien. What happened once you arrived there? And um, tell us a bit about oh, yeah, the so trip as, on the yeah, board. As I was saying, it, it, so, so where, where, where it all stems from is basically when, when these when um, Hrvatsky not many not Savas came out and hosted their um their their trials or their clinics in in Sydney, Melbourne, and Perth. They they selected a squad. Um, Fifteen players took up the opportunity, which then we um, with their parents. Um, they they flew into Zagreb. We all met on the Tuesday. There was three kids from Perth, seven from Sydney, and five from Melbourne. Um, so Marco Uskok, um, well known coach in Melbourne, took the reins as a head coach for the for the tour, and he was um, well supported by Vita Bazdaric from from Sydney. Um, so those two men headed up the the on field stuff, I guess. 
Um, we, we met in Zagreb, as I mentioned. We had a training session at Nogometni Klub Trinje, um, and then followed that up on the Wednesday with a game against against the local under 14 team, which the boys won comfortably, to be fair, 3-0. Um, and then we made our way into Vukovar on the Thursday, um, settled into Hotel Love, um, and then had our first game on um, uh, Friday morning against um, Vadeshdin, who were last year's champions. Um, started well, scored early, which I think maybe that's what Twenty was maybe alluding to, a lot of firsts. So we scored our first yeah. goal at the tournament. Um, yeah. When, when um, young, Perth, young Perth striker... Um, Anthony um, Vrebat scored for us. We we held on to one all at half time. Looked okay. The only thing that most probably hurt us, um, we were under the impression that it was unlimited interchange. When we got there, they told us that it was um, you could make unlimited substitutions, but you couldn't bring a player back on once he was taken off, which didn't help us at all because well, you know, um, Vardesh didn't have like 20 players on the bench. So, you know, they, they basically ran out of legs and, and, and got caught late and, and lost the game 3 1. Um, backed up a few hours later against the Eka, where, where the boys battled well. Um, and to be fair, almost probably unlucky not to win it. We had a couple of um, hometown refereeing decisions, shall we say, that <laughs> did help us. Um, but the boys held on for our first point. Um, we held on for our first point with, with a nil all draw, and then the last game was against Tabalia on the on the Saturday morning. Um, we again held our own, had a couple of early chances go to go one and two nil up, nil all at half time. Um, but again, the legs we just ran out of legs, um, and, and then lost. I think it was three nil in the last game, but with with a number of goals coming late. But look, all in all. Regardless of, of, I guess, the results on the park, even though there were a lot of firsts, I think what happened off the park was a lot more important to us as an organisation um, and what we do. Um, we, we wanted the kids to get three things out of it when we went over there and when, when, when Sarvis Australia sort of put this whole idea together. Obviously, as I mentioned, soccer is one thing. Um, you know, the kids had the opportunity to represent the Australian Croatians at a tournament with the possibility of being selected for the Croatian national side because every scout and every development officer from Krupan to Pletikosta and all the boys were at every game and watched every game. Um, the, the second main aim of the whole thing was to build a friendship. Like I said, there was three, there was there was players from three different states, being obviously Perth, Victor, Western Australia, New South Wales and, and Victoria. So them yep. getting to know each other, but then also them mingling with the Americans because what I, I forgot to mention, there was 15 teams that participated in this tournament. Um, there was there was a combination team from Austria, Switzerland that came over, a German, Sweden combined team and a Canadian American team that was there. So from the Despota, there was four teams that arrived, including the big boys from you know, including Zagreb and Hayduk and and um, and Lokomotiva, who ended up winning it at the end. So um, there was a lot of friendships, jersey swapping. You could see where our kids were swapping jerseys. So um, that part of it was, I suppose, invaluable for us. And then the last thing was why Vukovar. We we just wanted to we wanted to impress on the kids why this tournament is held in Vukovar and why Vukovar is what Vukovar is to all of us, and and why we're there and and. Hence why we, we spent a lot of time visiting um, monuments and museums and, and memorial gardens. And, and we laid a wreath on behalf of all Australians in Croatia um, at the cemetery there. There's some, photo, oh, there's some photos there you're just showing. So good timing. It was almost like we planned it, Tonchi. Um, oh, absolutely. So, look, it was, it, was, it was more than a soccer game. Uh, it was more than a soccer weekend. Um, and I just hope the boys took out of it as much as I did. I mean, it was my second time to Vukovar and, and just walking through the hospitals and, and the Ofchera and, and um, you know, and even on top of the water tower with the with the middle finger salute to serve you across the border, which was a bit of a, um, I don't know if I sent you that photo, but that was a bit of fun for the boys. So, no, look, all in all, um, it, was, it, was, it was just a great experience, I guess. Sorry, I've been talking. You should ask questions if you want. 
Oh, no, I don't think there's any questions to ask. But uh, look, I will. I will say um, the, the 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 press release that you guys did give us. Um, the some of the um, educational cultural tours of some of the uh, memorial sites included the Vukovar Hospital, the Ovchara Memorial Center, the National Memorial Cemetery of the victims of homeland war, the Vukovar Water yeah. Tower, and the barracks of the 204th Brigade of the Croatian Army. And um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things that everyone really ought to uh, visit, you know, at least once in their lifetime. I think it's so important. Um, Damien, th- uh, we, we seem to be breaking up, but the internet so far with uh, with Libna has been fantastic. But, mate, what I did want to ask you, I mean, uh, last year we spoke to Pave Yusuf, who was the then president of Melbourne Knights, and Yuri Dragovic as well from um, from the Sarvis. And they, they both, you know, said how it was very hastily organised last year and they did a very good job under the circumstances. They wanted to, they wanted to, um, I guess, incorporate some new things this year. And one of those things was um, practice match and training over in Croatia. How important was that for the team to get together? Oh, we've lost him. I asked a long question and he, I think he got sick of it. <laughs> I think that's what it was, isn't it? But what an experience for the guys. I mean, geez, yeah, just seeing that footage. Oh, here he is. He's back. Is he back? Well, someone's back. No. no back in black. He's back in black. Damien, you're there. Something's happening. But, yeah, what an experience for um, everyone. And, and, yeah, there's so many so many teams. Obviously, the camps, and they have gone to other countries. And so, uh, obviously, that's worked because, yeah, just hearing from Damien how many other countries have participated is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. And look, as I said, they, they got together. They had two training sessions in Zagreb um, and then a, a practice game against Trnje yeah, as well in Zagreb. So so that was fantastic. There he is. There's Damien. Are you back, mate? Live from Leeville. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, no, we got you there, mate. Oh, yeah, we just wanted to ask you how important was – the, um, the 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 couple of training sessions in Zagreb and also the practice match for just really fusing the squads together. I think very important. Like I said, that the kids for the first time met in Zagreb on the Monday. So, you know, we've got three kids uh-huh. come over from Perth, um, the Melbourne boys, the Sydney boys. So each of them sort of had an idea of each other. And even, even a couple from um, Sydney, there was a few from Marconi, a couple in the United um, Western Sydney Wanderers, I think one of the boys came from. So just getting to, getting them to gel. Um, and the other challenge we had, I guess, was that because Hrvatsky Nogomet Nisav has actually picked the squad, they didn't pick a squad, if that makes sense, as in a left back, a right back, a striker. They picked the yes. best players. So we ended up with six attacking midfielders, but no defenders. So trying oh, to tell God, a 14-year-old, you're going to play left back, and he's never played left back in his life, was a bit of a challenge. So there's there's some learnings that we can take out of it from on the park side of things. But I think I think the education and the cultural experience that we were able to provide these 15 kids and their families, to be fair, um, their families joined us on, on, on all the tours, was more than made up for what happened on the park. With so many midfielders, they must be looking for the next Mordic, right? Far out, let me tell you. Um, don't you? <laughs> potentially, potentially. Potentially, absolutely. <laughs> I want to ask, what about the quality of the other kids that you saw, like from, from America, from locally, et cetera? You know, um, did any sort of um, players stand out or team stand out? Uh, look, the, the Austrian team finished third. That they, Because the tournament is run on such a short, short period of time, it's only the top team goes through out of the four groups. So we had four groups of four. The top team goes through. Um, so Vardajdin went through our group. The, Aust- Aust- the Austrian um, Swede- Switzerland group went through in their group, which included Ossiek mm-hmm. and Dinamo. Um, uh, Lokomotiva went through in theirs. And uh, da, 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 who went through the last one? I'm not sure. Rudesh maybe. Rudesh went through because Rudesh lost the third and fourth. There's all I, all I can look at here. They must be having something in their water because a lot of big fourteen-year-olds. There's, there's, there's a lot. And technically, look. Let, to be fair, I don't think our kids were were 
overwrought in any way, shape or form. The thing that let us down was purely numbers. We just didn't have the bodies to be able to... Every game, we were either leading at halftime or, or we, were, we were drawing our own at halftime. So it was just that last 10, 15 minutes where mm -hmm. the other sides were able to make 10 changes. Like, like I said, the first game, Butters didn't make 10 changes. Um, we had three. Out of the 15, we had two goalkeepers. So we really had 13 outfield players. So it was a bit tough, but all credit to the boys. They, they, they really battled. Um, not a lot of drama on the park. I know, obviously, as 14-year-olds, there's, there's a little bit of, I don't want to play there. But once it was explained, and Marco did a great job, as, the, as did Vitsa. Um, so, no, it was all, all good. So it was a really good experience. Yeah. Now, speaking for, for like with regards to planning for next year or subsequent years, is there any talk about how things could be maybe improved or expanded? Is there are there are there other tournaments that boys could follow on from from the Vukovar tournament and maybe play in something else um, somewhere in Croatia? Is there is there is there talk of anything like that? But, well, just just talking to people around and after the tournament, there are other tournaments that are being held here at the same time. Um, maybe not as prestigious, I guess, or with the with the focus of Hrvatski Nogometni Sabas, Adam. So it's just something yep. that once once I get back, I guess, and have an opportunity to sit down with Yuda and Tom from Sabas just to see, as in the Australian Sabas, just to see what's what's our best way forward. And and, and obviously there's a big cost implication as well. And, and then parents, um, you know, although our Sabas through the member clubs were able to to fund the jerseys and the uniforms and everything else that our players and a lot of the a lot of the um, auxiliary costs, car hire and whatever else, there is still a large cost implication on our parents who who pay for the kids to come out and everything else. So it's something that we need to look at how we can offset that cost somehow and make it a little bit more attractive um, and and not cost a bit if the people who come out. But if there's more tournaments, yes, it's. And it's also school holidays, Tonchi, as well. So we've got to try and, you know, we don't want kids spending too much time here missing out on True. school. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very good point. Uh, Damien, you mentioned there are a lot of, obviously, people watching, a lot of scouts, a lot of people from the Sabres, etc. Mm. You know, did they give the players or the teams, you know, a bit of uh, sort of advice as to, you know, how to continue training or what sort of drills or, or anything like that? Or, or they're just specifically looking for players? Yeah, with Marco, we had, we had, we've already um, developed a decent relationship with Kripan and Pleti Kosa as well through Pave Yusuf as well, who was up here with us and, and acted as a bit of our, um, I suppose, guide um, around the whole thing. So, yeah, there has been some little stuff. There's been a couple of kids have been asked to hang around and have got trials or training sessions at Haydulk as well as at Dynamo. So we'll just see. I mean, it's an opportunity for the kids and it's it's a bit of an eye-opener for the kids as well who think that, that you know, I'm doing great guns in, in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever you might be doing it, but then when they come up against these kids who um, they're only, they're only out might be football, whereas our kids yeah. can pick and choose. If I don't like this, I'll go play as the rules or I'll go play yeah. the rugby league if you're in, yeah. in the north or, or whatever else, whereas... You could see the difference in the drive and, and even the way the coaches speak to their players is very different to how our coaches, um, not, not only Mark, but here, but in general um, in Australia, like if, if you heard some of the language that was coming out of these coaches, if that happened in Australia, they must probably get arrested. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a given. It's, that's what you're doing. You, you, know, you live or die by your decisions and, and you, you either sink or swim as a kid. Yeah, I, I heard so many very similar like uh, reviews or comments from from last year, and uh, it is it's an eye opener not only for the parents but obviously for mm. the kids. Um, and it's one of those things that if you want to succeed on the other side of the world, you really have to, as they say, toughen up. And it's a completely different yeah. environment, a real dog eat dog environment compared to here. And um, and it is a it is a wonderful learning experience, but. But um, it also mm. seems to me like one of the very, very few ways 
that the Domovin and the diaspora is able to be connected at the moment. And, and um, you know, kudos to people like yourself and Marko Uskok and Pave Yusup and 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 um and Yura Dragovic for 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 working so hard to foster these relations, but also um to create that tangible link between Australian Croatian football and Croatia. Uh, look, it's important. You're right. It's 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 what what and I can't take hardly any kudos except for this last trip. A lot of it, a lot of it's down to to, to Yura and Pava who who sort of ran with this idea last year and. We sent over our first team and, and followed up this year. Um, we're very well respected. What, what I did find is that we are well respected here and what we've done and, and the fact that we've attended. And um, so, so there's a lot of people in, in town that were happy to help and, and go out of their way to, to, to help us. Um, you know, just even a little one, the way Sabas pays for our, as in Hrvatsky Sabas here, pays for your hotel stay at Hotel Love until you're kicked out of the comp. So a lot of the teams were out the door on, um, on on the Saturday. However, we were there till Sunday and then Hotel Love was running around saying, you know, who's going to pay the bill? Who's going to pay the bill? Sarvis picked up our tab, thankfully, as in, but it was just that little bit of respect that the Hrvatsky Novament Sarvis has to us as well yep. as, a, as, a, as a country, I suppose, or as an organisation, which, which was nice to see. That is awesome. That's absolutely awesome. So, well, I mean, is, it, is it true that you're uh, actually uh, organising a uh, tournament in um, Levo as we speak, Damien, for next year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's build some better Wi-Fi. We need to build some better Wi-Fi here first before we can have a tournament. <laughs> uh, there is Troglav, Troglav, Levo. I'm actually going to stop in there and have a look at him training shortly, so we'll see. <laughs> Good to see. Thank Mate, you so much. Enjoy, enjoy the little bit of downtime you do have with your lovely family as well there. Um, I saw some social media posts saying you're showing your daughter where it all began, the centre of the universe, Livno. Yep. Um, good to see you, mate, and enjoy. And, um, and yeah, look, looking forward to when you get back, even catching up, and then uh, we, we can even take it yep. further from there. But, uh, yeah, really appreciate you jumping yep. on at such short notice. No worries, mate. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, hope the kids. And look, special thank you, just before I don't mention it, to Simon Pinchic and the team, the team at Umbro for fitting us all out. I'm sort of, it's not a plug, but they did a great job and the kids look good on the park as well. So thanks to everybody who, who helped out and the parents for being understanding with everything and you like for supporting it. So thank you and good luck with the show. Oh, thank you. And it's a massive effort. Yeah, it's not only yeah. the players, it's, um, yeah, everything behind the scenes. And I'm sure you did yeah. a great job uh, in organising all that as well, Damien. Big, big, nah, big no cheerio problem. to the coach, Marco Uskok, who says, bravo, Damien. Yeah. Uh, big cheerio that to Marco. Well done. All right, boys. Thank you. Good luck with it. Oh. It's like we may have lost, lost him. Um, that was Damien Bresic all the way from Livno in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, his birthplace, a good on him, and hopefully he can really... Oh, house. But yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's house. I know, not just place, but house. Yeah, <laughs> sensational. Until we're going to take a short break, when we return, hopefully we'll be tuning, uh, we'll be crossing over to Wollongong to get a score update in the big Sydney United versus Bully FC Australia Cup game being played at Sir Ian McLennan Park, which, by the way, is also the home ground of South Coast United or uh, Wollongong, Croatia, better known. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back straight after this break. Ozcro Imports brings you the finest taste of Croatian beer, spirits and wine. Let your taste buds feel the years of nurtured produce and years of experience in producing some of the best beer and wines from Croatia. Established over 10 years ago and importing various wine, spirits and beers from Croatia, we stop the following products. Osječko Pivo, Staro Češko and Velebitsko beers, all naturally crafted brews. We carry a wide range of shortcut spirits, which is renowned for top quality and has won numerous awards for its traditionally produced spirits. Some of these include Šliva, Viljamovka, Kajsije, Višnja, Orahovac and Medovača. We also have wines ranging from the Ilok region in Slavonia, Belje wines from the Danube region, Malvasia from Istra and the Palihnic brand Plavac Mali and Poshik wines from the Dalmatian coast. Our mission is simple, to ensure that quality, unique and reasonably priced Croatian goods can be enjoyed right here in Australia. 
We also cater for special gift packs for customers, be they birthdays, christenings, weddings, etc. It's easy to order online or you can telephone us to arrange a special package. Visit our website at www.ozcrow.com.au, like our Facebook page Ozcrow Imports, or you can contact us by calling 0419 or email sales at ozcrow.com.au. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's our first episode for 2024. Auntie, what's on the cards now? Well, we're crossing live to Wollongong, as you mentioned, and we've got Julian, who looks like he's frozen. What's going on, Julian? What's the score? Uh, boys, it is the 22nd minute. It is still nil all. Um, it's very cold here, if you couldn't tell. Um I'll have a beanie on, I'll have a trench coat, and I'm still freezing. Um, mate, you must be coming from the North Pole and not from Wollongong, but uh, Sir, Sir Ian McLennan Park, the home of South Coast United, Wollongong, Croatia. Julian, first of all, thanks for joining us. How, how's, how's the action been on the field in the first 20 or so minutes? Uh, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, United have predictably been uh, on top of them, but uh, Bull, I've had a few counter-attacks, a few through balls. Um, we've had majority of the possession. And, yeah, it's just been – it's just been um, – how do I describe it? It's just been a very shaky game from United at the start here. What's the, uh, what's the side look like? Is it a, um, you know, a mix of players or is it pretty much a top-line to United liner? Uh, so, in goals, we have Nikolovsky, the sub-keeper. Uh, and then we have Adrian and Bradnikovsky at the back. So Bradnikovsky, uh, the sub centre back. Um, on the left, we have uh, Jordi Ivancic. On the right, we have Bailey Rule. Uh, middle, Tomalic and Di Oliveira with Paddy, Nakamura, uh, Zerkaz, and De Robillard up top. So it's a good mix of. Uh, some players who need minutes, but also our stalwarts uh, in our team. Yes, and Hatch, Hatch isn't out there. He's been, uh, he's been uh, gunned down the wing um, so far this season. Oh. Nearly. Oh, yeah. pa Paddy has skied over the bar from the six-yard box. I know, oh. I know. Let's yeah. <laughs> have, um, the, have the Wollongong fans come out to support City United or it's uh, not much of a crowd there? Uh, it's a decent crowd for a 10 degree uh, wet Tuesday night. But uh, late kickoff as well. It was a late kickoff. It was an 8:35 kickoff. So, uh, but no, there's a there's a decent amount of fans here tonight. Um, everyone, or well, majority of the crowd wants United to win. Bull, I have some good numbers here. Uh, so yeah, top game and pretty decent atmosphere for the weather tonight. Julian, what sort of what sort of club is Bully? Uh, for, don't, for those that don't know, um, obviously, a team from the um, Illawarra Premier League. Uh, um, you know, how what sort of a side are they? Uh, Bully a are a uh, your typical um, Australian club. They were founded, uh, I think, nineteen oh one. So a lot of history there. Um, they have produced some good players in the past. Guy Knight. Uh, for the Wollongong Wolves. Yep. Um, you also have uh, Ruben Zadkovic, who played for the Socceroos. Yep. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're a bit of a mid-table team. They won the the final a couple of years ago. Uh, but they are a very um, mixed bag in terms of results. They either play at the top of their game or they're right down the bottom. Yeah, and we've seen uh, like Illawarra Premier League have got a you know quite a good decent. Some some of the squads are very decent. We saw uh, Wollongong Olympic defeat Hurstville Zagreb, and there were about five or six New South Wales NPL players, including a player who played at Sydney United last year. Um, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, Mr. Jason Madonis moved from Sydney United to Wollongong Olympic. Um, mm -hmm. They are the favourites for the competition, uh, majority of years. 
Uh, they have very strong backing in terms of uh, financially. Uh, but it's a very it's a very strong competition down here. It's your it's your uh, it's your classic old school football. There's oh, no yeah. there's barely any diving. There's hard tackles, and there's a lot of money actually. <laughs> a lot of very ethnic clubs, right? And tell us about South Coast a little bit this this year. How they've been going, and um, what what's the performance been like so far? Uh, so South Coast Croatia are going into their fortieth year this year as a club. Mm -hmm. which is a fantastic achievement considering we have, you know, barely a popular, uh, I reckon maybe one or 2,000 Croats down here. Um, this year, we haven't got off to the strongest start. We've uh, got one point from five games, uh, but we did have the five hardest teams in the comp to start off the uh, league with. So the only way is up from here? The only way is up. And still nil all. I haven't heard any screaming out. Uh, it's it's right. still nil all down here. Uh, it's... It could be in for a long night. It could be in for. Uh, do the lights come out? At, uh, turn off at midnight or something? Because you could go into extra time and uh, penalties over there. Oh, I hope not. I want to get home and sleep in my nice warm <laughs> bed tonight. <laughs> Mate, we we appreciate you coming in. It's still nil nil. What thirty minutes gone into the first half? We're hoping that that's going to obviously change. But uh, we do appreciate you uh, um, crossing live from Wollongong into the um, into our show. So wishing you all the best for and and everyone at South Coast United this year. But certainly hoping uh, Sydney United can get over Bulleye tonight, and I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will, boys. Uh, thank you for having me on tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, as Arte knows, I've wanted to come on here for a, a while now, and uh, he just doesn't let me. But he needed someone who's going to stand out here tonight. And um, do all so, the hard yards. Yep, sent me a message at work. <laughs> Brilliant. We've got a message already saying, I think you guys have found a new Wollongong correspondent. So there you go. You're already picking up some fans. Oh, well, there we go. It looks like I'm stuck on here every weekend, boys. Uh, <laughs> apologies. I'll say with the results and we'll keep everyone updated on the site. So, uh, no you, worries. Me, good, good, good on you, Julian. Really no worries, boys. It. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Julian. Okay. Well, well, we'll stay in touch with Julian. We're going to wind it up very, very quickly. We're going to take one more commercial break when we return. Hopefully, we'll, we might even get an update from the uh, Gold Coast Knights game. We'll, we'll see if we can uh, get in touch with uh, Austin uh, Ludwig as well. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll be back straight after this short break, folks. Don't go away. It is the Oz Crow Show. It's all happening live here tonight. A big thank you to all of our um, um, business advertisers. Uh, we've had Corsa Hair Studio, Plema App, Ozcrow Imports tonight, and also to our major sponsor, Gem Life and Living Gems. Well, Ante, we haven't heard back from um, from the Gold Coast so and from the uh, Gold Coast Knights captain, Austin Ludwig. The last time we, we heard the score was 2-0 in favour of the Knights, and that was heading into the second half. So... Uh, I'm sure uh, the, the the boys are still doing very well up there. But, Auntie, that was the first show back. Um, great to have you on board. And um, we look forward to next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for another um, install, installment of the Ozcro Soccer Show. Yeah, thanks for everyone for tuning in and the comments. We always love the comments coming through, so keep them coming. And, um, yeah, really appreciate everyone's support, particularly all the sponsors who uh, brought us back onto air this year. So uh, thank you so much. Folks, good night, and we look forward to having your company on next Tuesday night. In the meantime, do tune in on, on Thursday night at 8 p.m. for Dinamore TV, the official podcast of the St. Albans Dinamore Football Club. From me, good night. Like a notch.